Hello, my name is Rafael Seif, and in this learning object, we are going to learn some typical expressions and vocabulary for technical descriptions in engineering, for example. These are the contents of the learning object. We will see how to carry out technical and detailed descriptions for engineering. Some expressions and vocabulary typically related to description and structures to uh, express uh, dimensions. The objective is to learn how to make technical descriptions of objects, products in engineering, to review basic vocabulary related to it, and to learn how to give exact dimensions. And normally when we give a detailed description, it's very important to start with a type of object, and then, depending on the object or product, we can focus on certain aspects, such as the function, the purpose, or the structure. Here we have a typical example. The kettle is a household appliance. This is a general verb, a noun to express it. And is used to boil water, is used for boiling water. And then a more detailed description will fo would follow. It consists of a plastic or metal jar comprising an electrical resistant resistance which is connected to the mains through a cable. Depending on the object, you, dis, uh, you, ma, you have to uh, decide which aspects you want to um, deal with. These are the difficult questions you ask yourself or other people in order to obtain a detailed description of an object. What it is, it gives the definition or description, general description. What it is made of, the composition. What are its components? What does it look like for general look or shape? What is its size, size and dimensions? What are its properties? What is it used for, for the purpose or applications? Or how, plus an adjective, to give a specific uh, uh, characteristic. We, may, we can, depending on, of the, on the object, as I said, focus on certain aspects, the composition, the properties, dimensions, applications, etc., when we describe something. And it's important to note that normally the verb tense that we use is the, present, the simple present, with typical verbs such as to be and to have, contain and comprise, or all the possibilities too. And a very important structure that is used when describing is the, uh, the word consist. And in, when we use consist, the, typical, the preposition is consist of, always. Consist in, which is a typical false friends for uh, Spanish students, is only allowed when you follow this expression with a redefinition, not with the different parts. And so you must take this into account. So we normally start with a definition, for example, lead is a heavy metal, a relay is a switching device, and then we can state the uh, composition, for example, typically with made of, consists of, or it has different components, parts, or pieces. These are typical uh, structures. Then we can include properties, that typically with a verb, general verb such as is, looks, seems, becomes, has, plus an adjective or a noun, and we can give different properties, as we will see in a minute. To give the applications of the purpose, we use typically the expression is used for plus ing or to plus infinitive. We can also use the verb serves to, or we can use the expression is used in plus a noun. For example, it is used in mechanical engineering. We can concentrate on different possible properties or characteristics of the object or the product, such as the color. If we don't know the color exactly, we can say it's yellowish or bluish, which is close to this color. The surface, the size, such as, here we have some examples to refer to size, or weight. There are some other synonyms as well, but these are the most general ones. The dimensions, general dimensions, long, short, wide, narrow, high, tall, short, thick, thin, 
Deep shallow. Oh, here we have some other um, engineering properties. Rigid, hard, flexible, soft. Or here we have another list of typical, uh, typical properties to describe objects. Mm? You have to check whether you understand them, but these are presented here in a quite graphical uh, way. We can also refer to more engineering properties of materials, for example. And here we have a list here, and in the next slide we have typical uh, engineering properties. Hardness, the ability of a material to withstand or resist abrasion or surface scratches. Melting point, the temperature at which the material changes from solid to liquid. Electrical or thermal resistivity. Elasticity, malleability and ductility are very is, is closely related uh, um, properties of materials. Brittleness, the capacity to break easily. Conductivity, to conduct heat or uh, electricity. Thermal conductivity or electrical conductivity. Or toughness, which is the ability of a material to withstand the natural elements. You have to check, you understand these engineering properties properly. And normally, very often properties are given in, in the form of a noun or an adjective. Here we have a list of the most typical ones in engineering. Heat, hot, conductivity, and the adjective conductive, resistivity, resistivity resistive, density, dense, toughness, tough, elasticity, Elastic, strength, strong, brittleness, brittle, malleability, malleable, ductility, tactile. Mind the pronunciation too. Here we have a, a comprehensive list of um, typical engineering uh, properties. Mm, resistant at the end of one expression uh, is very typical as well. It can be mm, a thermal resistant or corrosion resistant. And we have a typical construction of adjectives ending in Y, IC, similar to ice, or EN at the end, golden, similar with the same properties of gold. We can concentrate on the shape as well. Here we have um, the typical geometrical shapes that we use in technical English. And it is important to note uh, that you have to choose between a, a noun or adjective when you describe the shape. Here we have the most typical ones. A square, it's square in shape. A rectangle, it's rectangular in shape, mind the pronun different pronunciation. A circle, it's circular in shape. A triangle, it's triangular in shape. An oval, it's oval in shape. Or a semicircle, it's semicircular in shape. To describe any shape in English, if you cannot do so with these uh, alternatives, you have the possibility of saying shade at the end of the adjective. For example, this is star-shaped, shape in the form of a star. In order to um, express uh, dimensions in English, it's very important to use the correct uh, word. The, of the dimension, which can be an adjective or a noun. Here we have the four most typical ones. Long, which is the dimension expressed with an adjective. Length is the same dimension expressed with a noun. Wide, width. Deep, depth. High, height. This will serve us to uh, make questions such as how long is it? what is its length, etc. And in order to express exact dimensions in English, we have these four possibilities. We can use the adjective with no preposition. The bar is three meters long, no preposition. The second example, to use the pre uh, dimension noun. In this case, we must use the preposition in. The bar is three meters in length. And examples three and four are very could be exactly the same in Spanish. The bar has a length of three meters, or the length of the bar is three meters. 
In conclusion, uh, there are different aspects that you must take into account when uh, describing. Uh, you, have to, you must have certain basic technical vocabulary about properties, etc. And you have to give the uh, exact dimensions properly with one, any of these four possibilities that, are, that we dealt with at the end of this learning object. Uh, thank you very much and I hope this was useful for you. Thanks.